SABC, Inspiring Uganda. A warm welcome and uh, gentlemen and ladies, we are on air and uh, this is the behind the headlines on the UBC television here on Nile Avenue in Kampala. My name is Charles Odongtho and today is Wednesday the 25th of January 2023, the year of our Lord. We are going to be discussing issues to do with the parliament, the legislature, the 11th parliament. Um, it has been in the news for a number of issues, some good real good ones, others um, not so good in the public eye, but what is there that we must not discuss, especially when we are um, looking at them from behind the headlines. And we will be bringing you all those issues to discuss all of them. We have, let me start from the extreme left, the man himself, he needs no introduction. Um, he, he caught trouble as much as he does good. Chris Obore, Director of Communications, Parliament of the Republic of Uganda. Chris, you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, Charles. You Good promised day. that you would wear the bow tie. You did well 2022. The year has started. You're doing well. Jacob's signature. Keeping a pledge is important, mm -hmm. and I like that. Yes. Good. I'm moving towards March, yes. and I'm beginning my memories. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, next to Chris is um, Senior Counsel, uh, President Emeritus of the Uganda Law Society, um, <coughs> Fiona Wall Nabasa, and she currently um, runs uh, um, Fidelis Leadership Institute. Fiona, you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Today in red, and uh, I, I will see what Sarah is wearing. Um, <laughs> it's called lilac. Yeah. It's called what? Lilac. That's the color. That's Sarah. That's the color. What, what has Sarah just said? We are warming up for Valentine's. Oh, uh -huh. I think I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say what I was just about to say. I have no comment. <laughs> Even me, I'm not going to comment. S send me dollars. Don't send me flowers. I grew up seeing them in Tesla. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you want them to be the ones who send for you? Of course, they're empowered. Ah, okay. but are you the chairman of SMAO? Sarah's promised me one thousand dollars. Next to next to Council Fiona, I said no comment. Mm -hmm. Men, be very careful with what you are going to say. Mm -hmm. It can be used against you because this show is recorded and it is on YouTube and it is you can you, people can pick it and you know people record from home and i'm going on record sir i send media dollars not a flower i grew up seeing flowers in teso mm. <laughs> godba tomushabe executive director of great lakes institute for strategic studies gliss godba is a lawyer by profession godba you're most welcome to the show thanks very much charles uh, very good evening to our viewers i'm uh, very delighted to be here once again good um and uh, Honorable Ojara Mapenduzi, he is MP for Barjege Laibi in Gulu City. Honorable Ojara, you're most welcome back. Isn't this your first show this year? I'm not sure. Um, you have recently really global, global trotted. I think this is, no, this is not my first. This is not your first? Second. second. Oh, second. Yes, yes. But the fact that you can count them <laughs> is also good <laughs> enough. That's right. That's right. Well. <laughs> Thanks, Lady Charles, and good evening, viewers. Welcome back. Thank you. And finally, uh, Council Sarah Birete, uh, Executive Director of 
um, executive director, now I'm even beginning to forget, of the Center for Constitutional Governance, CCG. Sarah, you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you, Charles, and uh, good evening, viewers. Good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, towards <coughs> the end, um, in a few minutes, I will be asking you to make brief comments and as we wind up the show um, for tomorrow's day, um, which is... Uh, what is the Which uh, tomorrow is the... Sarah, you know your calendar. Tomorrow is the 26th of January, Liberation Day, NRM Day. So towards the end, as news commentators, I will be asking you to make a comment. Um, but the, top, the main topic, of course, is Uganda's parliament. And the, 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 the topic I was given is in form of a question. Is it delivering? It's only worthy that I start with Obore so that we, we, you know, for the benefit of doubt, we want him to be the one to tell us. Are you... Um, is your parliament delivering? Is our parliament delivering? To what extent? What are the expectations of the people? Um, I will be bringing in the rest. And of course, um, the fact that there is an MP here, um, he will be um, marking his, uh, his, uh, his director in charge of communication on whether he delivers well on, 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 on that question. But if for guidance purposes, um, this week and last week have been very interesting in Parliament. Um, another history was made. Only the third MP, I think, uh, minister to be censured in our, history. I think if my memory serves me right, mm -hmm. only the third so far censured. Um, and this is the 11th Parliament. Fra from the first Parliament, um, we had, I think, six when uh, Honorable Jim Wesey, was it the sixth or the seventh? Um, Honorable Jim Wesey and Honorable Kutesa were censured. Um, but others who were threatened with censure um, decided to jump ship and uh, they bolted on their own, a number of them. Um, so, but I'm referring mostly to the ones who were um, properly by parliamentary resolution censured. Um, so, Honorable Passis Namuganza. Uh, from lands, a minister of state was censured on Monday and by a huge, huge margin. Um, and then, of course, there has been a lot of discussion about, um, you know, Kosase, and we had tried to call Honorable Joel Senyoni, um, but he said he could not make it. So maybe those will guide our discussion. But Chris, you may start us. Oh, Charles, thank you. When we say is Parliament delivering, it's a the, huge question. The question is so broad. Yes, that's why I decided that we can focus it. If you want, focus also, focus it on the current events. Uh, we'll still discuss them, but overall, Parliament is delivering. Why? I think there is. If you look at the constitutional obligations of parliament, it would be either someone who deliberately has a misconception of parliament to deny that parliament is, is working. As we speak, in spite of what is taking all of us, the budget framework paper is progressing. Even by this evening, the presidential committee, PACOB, PACOB and the budget, they have been the whole day at the Premier's office going through the budget to ensure that the country <coughs> come June has a new budget and takes care of the interests of the executive as per the presidential manifesto. That is a very, very important role of parliament, and it is going on, it's working. Uh, one can come into the dynamics of budget allocation, to what extent does parliament <laughs> allocation of budget translate into the desired outcomes, that will be a different topic, because it will then embrace parliament and then other implementing agencies. So, but in terms of the core mandate of parliament, Parliament is on course. When we talk about accountability issues, every day 
committees of parliament at work. Even as we speak, one on health is in Fort, is in Kasese. Mm -hmm. They are out. Mm -hmm. The doctor cameras are out, trying to see what is going on. That comes into uh, budget monitoring, the performance and what. MPs are doing their best. If you come to representation, you can see every mem every, every constituent is, is represented in the parliament. So I would say parliament is doing this work. It's different from to what extent does their work please you. In this case, you, the voter, that goes into subjectivity. I will not delve into that. But of course, I will only encourage Parliament to continue doing its work to win even the doubting Thomases. Because I have always emphasized in any service delivery mechanisms across board, not just Parliament, let us not use <coughs> our frame of analysis to determine the satisfaction of clients. Let us derive feedback from the clients on how they perceive our services. And then it inputs on our responses as parliament. At the same time, we ask the, the clients to be able to understand that the people have given a job to do, what are their challenges, and how do you help them serve you better? It's always an iterative process. And in the police analysis, we say there is no magic bullet. This solution creates another problem. You have to find a solution to it. So that sometimes makes the ordinary person, because of the pressing needs, to imagine nothing is being done. It's like we talk about the health sector. They will tell you there are no hospitals, but how do you give an honorable jar good shoes? <laughs> you get it? Sometimes those are the comparative analysis people will give, but you find it is lacking. If you go back to the statistics, you find incrementally how healthcare is improving, at least both at the public and at the private, not to the expected standards, but we are, we are moving. So there is performance. Let me come to the, the juice, I think the reason for this talk show the current events, the sense of a minister, the Honorable Joe Sonyoni runs in the public. I think one, I've had all the arguments for, <coughs> against. This is my position. The censor of Honorable Namganza did not stop any other parliamentary activities. In mm. fact, as the censor was going, several committees were working. It is not that Parliament stopped any other business to process a censor motion. <laughs> not at all. Why the censor? People have different, depending on your political inclination, depending on your feelings. But what do I take from it? I think Parliament is trying to assert itself. It's setting parameters. The public, including me, have been waiting. We want a parliament that does this. We want a parliament that does this. But from this sensor, I begin to read as an analyst that I think parliament is setting parameters and are saying we have been bashed enough. Can we clean our house such that we can speak to Ugandans as an institution? Such that we can confront the challenges the country faces as a collective whether you are from NRM, whether you are from NUP, whether you are from FDC, whether you are independent, you belong to this entity called the Parliament of Uganda with expectations from the public. You have your color, but there's an institution called the Parliament. You have chosen to belong to it. Go by what it is norms. Or at least set a standard that you are leaders. It is saying the title honorable is merited through your conduct. What does being honorable mean? Your conduct and your disposition. It's not only just being a thief, but even how you project the image of that title. Okay. That's why I see Parliament is coming out very strong. 
And it is not about Rebo Namganza, if you read. I've seen Simo saying it had generated in two petty wars. You know, the other day it was Honorable Zake. Now it is Amuganza. Then it is Joel. But the common thread there, it is about the leadership of parliament. Because the people involved, the, the antagonists and the protagonists are all leaders. Mm. Honorable Zake was a commissioner of parliament. Mm. Honorable Namuganza is a cabinet minister. Honorable Joel is a chairperson of Kosasi. Mm. And I think MPs are saying, we already have a challenge from the public with a huge expectation on, on us. They already think we don't deserve anything. By our conduct, we either enhance their perception or we win them back okay. that have some trust in us. But if we begin behaving like we're also in a winner market, then you're lending credence that we are not anybody. Okay. So we are, the, and the, the, what should even clearly teach us why that consensus? Any sense of motion would definitely have a tight count. But this was an overwhelming majority. Mm -hmm. It was a rare one. A, a rare one. It means the House is picking something. That look, we already have a threat that is coming out from the people who expect from us. But you are one of us. And you're behaving in a manner unbecoming. And they're also saying, this House, they start by respecting our leadership. If you don't respect our leadership, who will punish you? Okay. And the MPs have said, if you are belligerent, you will pay a price. Okay. Now, we need now to say to them, okay, if this is what you have decided on, set in, correct your behavior and translate it into outcomes that can make us proud of parliament. Okay. But the censor has it is, comes from that perspective. Okay. That you cannot be an LOC one, and then someone is making you look like not an LOC one. Even LOC one deserves the honor okay. because he was elected by peers. So the censor, in the summary, is a peer review voice. Okay. That when we are together, this is expected of us. If we go against it, we will sanction you. Okay. Let me let me just cross over straight to um, to, to to Sarah here. Um, the same question. I want to give you the same question. 11th Parliament, um, is it delivering any of you, mm -hmm. given what, compared to what Chris has said, and compared to the, the focus we are looking at? Well, I think we need to bring the viewer speed on uh, what are the core functions mm -hmm. of, of Parliament. And I will use the indicators of assessing parliament set by the Interparliamentary Union, where Ugandan parliament is a member. And these indicators are driven from the Sustainable Development Goals 16.6 and 16.7. Uh, but before I go to the indicators of assessing parliament, indicators of performance, what is the vision of our parliament of Uganda? A transformed, independent, people-centered parliament. Mm -hmm. So the listeners should help us also critique parliament based on its own set mission and vision. And it's clear on the website of parliament. So <coughs> the question or the purpose for this debate is, are Ugandans confident that democracy and political institutions are acting in their interest? What is expected of a people-centered parliament? Mm -hmm. A people-centered parliament should work tirelessly to improve the welfare of the people through its broad functions. And our parliament drives its functions and mandates from Article 79 of the Constitution. I want to briefly go through the performance on face value because one of the key functions of parliament is to legislate, make laws for the peace, order, and development of Uganda. The second key function is protect and defend the constitution of Uganda. They have other related functions of uh, budgeting, appropriation, 
through the appropriation function, taxation, as well as oversight and accountability of the executive. Our parliament in 2021 passed eight, discussed eight bills. In 2022, discussed 13 bills. That's a total of 21 bills. Most of them have been passed into Acts of Parliament, especially the omnibus, the, the, the acts related to taxation, finance, excise duty, and others that were passed at the same time. So when you're looking at the indicators of Parliament, or whether Parliament has performed or not, you need to look at the effectiveness of Parliament. That's the first indicator. An accountable Parliament, accountable to the people. The third indicator is transparency of Parliament. Mm. The fourth one is responsive Parliament, acting as and when it's expected by the people. The fifth indicator is inclusivity. And the sixth, participatory parliament. The seventh is a representative parliament. So I will briefly assess the functioning of this parliament, drawing from these indicators set by the, their own interparliamentary union. So for, for democracy to progress, everyone, everyone must feel that they have strong democratic parliaments that, that represent the will of the people. This is explained in a in twofold. Parliaments need to constantly ensure that their work, conduct, addresses people's expectations. It's a people's parliament. It's commonly known as a temple of democracy, given that the democracy is, you know, the popular majority, where the majority have their way, but the minority have their say. So do we have that in Uganda? That basic tenant of democracy. Do we have a say of the minority in this country? Do we have observance of the constitution in this country? Do we have, I've, I've seen on, on several accounts, and whenever I'm in office, I watch parliament. Because as a constitutional watchdog, mm -hmm. our first focus is on the entity that is entrusted with protecting the constitution and promoting constitutional governance. And in our situation, it's only parliament. Mm -hmm. I've seen on three occasions, and I'll give a simple example, where members of parliament tend to question the conduct of uh, serving military personnel engaging in things that are prohibited to constitutionally. That's the question that is dismissed with immediate effect. When people say, look, Atko says this, military officers are not supposed to do this, can we talk about this issue? The presiding officers immediately dismiss that question. But what is the core function of parliament? Protect and defend the constitution. Even if you judged them at that on a question of protecting the constitution, they can easily score. This is than 30%. When you come to the second core role of parliament, ensure that the executive branch delivers in line with society's requirements. To what extent is this being done? You know, parliament can be effective in three simple ways. One is having post-legislative scrutiny. You've made laws, but how effective are these laws? How are they being implemented? Do we even have an element where parliament assesses the implementation of laws that they make, even those that they are supposed to protect? You don't have to necessarily defend the laws you've enacted as a session of parliament. What is the post-legislative scrutiny element in our parliament? I've not, I'm yet to see it. Let me give another basic example. Just over the weekend, we had two incidences of violation of fundamental rights and freedoms. One was in, I think, two were in Jinja. So I will talk about Jinja and another incident in Kampala. In Jinja, Arsenal fans were arrested 
for celebrating the victory over a match. <laughs> it might look like a simple what matter. What were they doing in ginger? <laughs> it might look like a simple matter. And then to make matters worse, yeah. the police stated that even those Arsenal fans did not understand the club they are celebrating. <laughs> but can you imagine how unfortunate we are as a country that we have a situation where we have done away with suffocation of civil and political rights, and now we are going for the social basic rights, like celebrating a football match. You have no freedom to get on the street and say, my team has won in this country called Uganda. This is abuse of freedom of association. Does parliament interrogate such questions? When you look at, of course, there was a retreat of Noop that was dispersed. That is now, that has become normal in this country. Opposition has no right to associate, to assemble, to gather. And we have a parliament that is supposed to protect the constitution. On the other hand, the same weekend, you have a senior military office in this country. Doing rallies all over the country, politicking, violating the Constitution, violating the UPDF Act. I have seen some MPs trying to raise these fundamental questions. They are immediately shut down. So it does Parliament have capacity to protect the Constitution? That is basic Article 79. And if you don't have it, are you then worth the name of being called a Parliament? Okay. Um, Ojara, I think it is only proper that you are the one who answers that question. Are you worth being called a parliament? <laughs> given what Sarah has said, I'm, I'm not given sure. the topic. I'm, I'm not sure you would want me to say yes. <laughs> no, certainly no. Um, thank you. You thank say you. yes with reasons. <laughs> no with the following reasons. I'll, I'll start with a yes. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Charles, for really, you know, uh, bringing this topic so we can talk about it. And, and it's good that um, Chris, who speaks on behalf of Parliament, is here. But also from the way uh, Dr. Sarah has expressed herself, I, I want to believe that the, the expression, um, you know, depicts uh, the kind of frustration that not only Dr. Sarah, but many people. And, and it's important to recognize that, that yes, there are many people who are not happy with the institution of parliament. Um, there are many Ugandans who think parliament should do much more than what it's doing. Uh, and so it's, it's important to respect um, what they think and uh, what they express. Uh, the only part where I think sometimes, even when there is that frustration, we should be able to recognize. And, and this is from my own experience. The 11 parliament has tried. I have taken time to understand how the 10 parliament, um, you know, worked. And from the time we started, there are quite a number of positive, you know, steps that the 11 parliament has made. But because there is so much that is going on in this country, even when there are a lot of progress is being made, Sometimes it's difficult for some people to believe because they are, they are, they are grief. And, and you, cannot, you cannot rubbish when Dr. Sarah says, I am this and feeling this and this is what you, we don't need to rubbish that. We need to take it in good faith and, 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 and use it as, you know, as, as, as a way of making us understand, reflect, and also try to create improvement. So that is, that is how I take it. I don't know whether I'm answering you directly. <laughs> that is how I take it. 
But I also want uh, Dr. Sarah and many other people uh, to take time. Because this is our parliament, your parliament. And indeed you have a duty to not only critique, uh, but also, you know, as, as a citizen, you have a duty to, to interact with us. I'm just reading that because 79. Correct. Functions of parliament. Perfect, perfect. I, I have not, uh, I'm not completely against what you're saying. I am only trying to also help you <laughs> to, to look at things from the other angle. Yes, you are not happy. Uh, I recognize that. But I also want you to take time and dig deeper because there are a lot of activities and a lot of discussions that take place daily. Unfortunately, looks like in this country, people pay attention to one or two things and that becomes a, you know, that becomes a tool for making judgment. But generally, our parliament is trying its best to make sure we do what it takes to serve the interests of this country. And it's done daily. Um, you have talked about uh, uh, how you know, there are many things, you, the example of the Arsenal funds and many other cases. And you know, indeed, these are, these are incidences that shouldn't happen in this country. And you will agree with me that at least in Parliament, every time discussions are held concerning some of these issues. And we take decisions. And it, it's, it's not true that the presiding officers, you know, will rubbish. I don't think that is correct. We have uh, today the um, Minister of Defense uh, gave a report. The speaker directed that we needed a report, um, you know, regarding the operation going on in Congo and all that. That came from concerns raised by members regarding the involvement of the UPDF in Congo and all that. We raised that and we demanded because we have a duty and they have to account to, 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 you know, to, to the people. So the minister brought the report today. And indeed, Parliament demanded an apology, first for delaying, but also when he made presentation, Parliament demanded that actually the report he gave wasn't adequate. Now, those are some of the things that when we do, um, Dr. Sara is not aware mm -hmm. and says, when you raise things, they're just rubbish. So I would want us to be very objective. Yes, there are difficult issues in this country. And, but, but, you know, it shouldn't make us lose hope and begin to see every, you know, uh, institution as <coughs> either part of the problem or failing to do the right thing. Because in the four areas that she has talked about, in as far as our, you know, mandates are, are concerned, I think we have done well and we will continue doing well. Actually, the 11th parliament, within a short time, has done much better compared to many other parliaments that we have had. Like which one? Which <laughs> parliament? Uh, well, like the previous parliament. Or like the 10th. <laughs> <laughs> and many others, because we are, we are the 11th parliament. So I'm talking about the previous parliament. Because when you look at the number of, uh, uh, Sarah is saying about uh, the, the number of bills that we have passed, the number of resolutions, and. And actually, in terms of oversight, I don't think the previous parliaments are doing the kind of, I mean, they did the kind of things we are doing now. It is only the 11th parliament does, that has, has, has created real impact, even in the health sector, just like uh, Chris is talking about. Actually, uh, fortunately, I was part of uh, a task force that moved to every health facility in this country. And I think parliament produced the best report, including, and we took a stand. Including Kamboga. We moved to every health facility in this country. Hmm. But Kambuga, Did you go to our minister was in a crisis. Can you allow me to talk? Uh, Please allow him to. I am saying every health facility, including <laughs> the one you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, that does not mean that, does not mean <laughs> that 
you know, things are perfect. It's a progress. And so we have to take from the expressions that you are giving that yes, um, the citizens are concerned. So how do we make things better daily and make sure we, we you know, keep the, uh, that commitment? Now coming to, of course, you know, uh, just like Charles put it, um, the last few days, what have been going on. I do not want us to use those three examples being talked about as, as a basis for you know, uh, determining whether this parliament is delivering or not. First, every, just like every family should have rules and ways that a family should conduct itself, every institution, actually every society must have a culture. A society that does not have a culture is a dead one. So parliament as an institution has got ways in which it has to be managed. And it's, it's, and it's written down. We have the constitution, we have you know, our rules of procedures. And, and so some of these things that people are talking about or what, whatever is happening in parliament, the first question is, are these things happening within the, pre the provision of the laws mm. as an institution? Yes. Okay. If we are talking about the uh, removal of uh, you know, the Honorable Minister, I wouldn't want to talk about But you see, I have heard some people try to uh, really make the discussion petty and tend to make it personal. You know, this is this. And whatever is being said is diversionary. Because this is something that started last year. Started with a concern, just like I stated, where a member raised a concern on the floor of parliament regarding certain assets of government, land. And parliament went ahead to form a committee, a special committee, to conduct an investigation. The committee did, did its part. A report came. And then somebody says, you know, uh, this parliament does not have the power to do this. I'm not answerable to you. And that is misconduct. First, if you are minister, you owe this country. You know, you have a duty to account. And there are institutions that should hold you accountable. Okay. So if parliament is trying to <coughs> discipline somebody, so you tore the line. I think we should be allowed to make sure we build systems that work. Okay. And that starts with how we conduct ourselves, the level of discipline. Because you cannot have people do things successfully when they're in discipline. Okay. Thanks. It becomes, you know, cancerous. <coughs> it affects even the services we talk about. Okay. So, um, just to conclude with, you ask me and my answer is yes. I'm not sure whether you're convinced. <laughs> no, no, no. Of course no. you Me, me these questions <laughs> I don't Of course answer. I don't want you to be convinced, <laughs> Honorable, Dr. Sarah. Honorable. I want you to understand. Honorable. No, no, I don't. You know the, you know the, 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 the privileged the privilege seat that I, I sit on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That when I ask these questions, <laughs> I don't ask them on my I know. behalf. Yes. I ask them on behalf of... I understand. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, whether they are convinced or not, we shall see in whether their frustrations are sorted out and whether their perceptions are mm. answered. Um, Council Fiona, mm. your own um, thoughts about the topic, how would you answer it given the circumstances that we are in? Um, this is the second year, um, the second year of now running. Um, it was sworn in 2021 in May. May. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now we are heading towards finishing the second year. The, the second year. How would you gauge the performance of the 11th Parliament so far? Uh, thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. I am greatly intimidated by the big minds on this stage. Um, Honorable Ojara kind of <clears throat> took away some of our moral authority <laughs> by saying there's a lot that happens. So, if, like, we see only the surface, which is true. But <clears throat> every, uh, um, in the law, there's a maxim that says equity should not only be seen, sorry, be done, yeah. Justice. but it should be seen to be done. Justice, Justice should, not, should only not only be, be done, yeah. but should be seen 
to be, be done. There. Yeah. <clears throat> and the the litmus test of justice is the Muntua Wansi, Honorable Jaya, that person in your constituency who does not even read and write English. Does that person believe that this parliament is serving them? And for me, I also object to us discussing second parliament, 11th parliament. This is an institution of government. And when we say, is it working, we want to see progress. And we will not see progress for as long as people only rate themselves for the time they're in office. Because then they will not take responsibility for what came before. We have what we call collective responsibility. So as a citizen, I would want to know how far have we gone as the 11th parliament to correct some of the mistakes that we talk about from the past parliaments. We'd like to see that. Um, <clears throat> and not to come from a pessimistic point of view, because sometimes when I listen to these discussions, I get depressed. I want to praise the 11th parliament. There are moments that have really listened and they have spoken for the people of Uganda. Mm. We saw what they did for coffee. Mm. Mm. They saved the people of Uganda. I don't know how much progress has been made around that area, but just saying council's contract for me was progress. Mm. The mm. second thing was the issue of bail. They stood together. They were no longer talking according to their colors. They spoke like Ugandans, and they were able to protect the constitution. So I will applaud them for those things. We have seen, I will admit that we've seen more action. I don't know whether bec it's because there's more online transparency and everything, I, the technology that came mm -hmm. during COVID. <clears throat> so I'll applaud the energy, the I'll applaud the fact that these are 80 increase. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the anti-torture act. Let me, let, let, yes, okay. Uh, I'll give you the trumpet. <laughs> I'm here blowing it for you. <laughs> but, but, um, Just in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but, um, so I will applaud the progress made. But that does not remove the fact that the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda establishes a parliament with a vision that that parliament is the actual people's tool to achieve the objectives that are in the preamble to the 1995 constitution. When we look at them, they are the only chance we will ever have to speak to power, the only voice we have. So the question for me would be, does the Muntuawansi feel heard? Mm -hmm. We are disturbed as a people when we see the following. One, oh, I didn't praise, I wanted to praise even the historical parliamentarians, the passing of the Judiciary Administration Bill. There's been many things that have happened that have, uh, the, 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 the phenomenal human rights, uh, what, what's that? Enforcement. Enforcement Act. Act. I think that was a, a, a situation of courage that has created a powerful precedent. So even other parliaments have worked well, but I want us to think of this parliament as a continuation. Because when I become <coughs> the senior manager, legal, national water, I take on the institution. I, I, I start representing the institution in cases of, of that, that, that occurred before I was there. You have mm. to take responsibility. Mm. So please allow us also to judge you on the things of the past that you have not yet touched. Yeah. Um, the issue for me on the oversight role, when we look at a budget paper that we recently looked at, we know, yes, we've had, you know, yes, you've done some, some good work in health, but I don't know whether we should pat ourselves on the back when the budget for Ministry of Health still falls under the standards of the protocol that we, we signed. Uh, mm. what's the, Abuja. The, the Abuja protocol. Mm. Sure. We failed on that, and 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 it does. It is not. It's not a simple failure. I come from Kambuga. My father has had heart issues. That hospital has been historically like that. So yes, while everybody was praising the fact that now they've released money, is it only when if a minister? No, let me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Please don't catalyze my comments. <laughs> they are very innocent. Do you need water? But if if it <laughs> takes <laughs> guys, I'm very serious here and I'm speaking for the people of Kambuga. If it takes a minister or a, a parliamentarian to collapse and for them to realize that a hospital needs facilitation, then the Muntu Awans is not being heard. D do you understand? Mm -hmm. How many people have died because Kambuga did not have oxygen? Thank God COVID didn't reach there. Because I don't know what would have happened. So what I'm trying to say is that their failings, our, our oversight role on the issue of budget, and I'm saying our so that you don't feel judged, but <laughs> that oversight role yeah. on the issue of allocation of parliamentary, of, of, of resources, the questionable supplementary budgets you pass and then later on we are told you are facilitated uh encouraged and incentivized with amounts of money in order for you to pass is there what is the other definition I of am not facilitated going there. Uh, please have mercy mr moderator <laughs> <laughs> let me finish my submission in my own words okay facilitated in a way that would compromise your ability to critique such a decision Recently, we were doing a critique of this budget, and, and we could tell that there are some areas that they've cut the budget. But we know from history that they do present a moderate budget, though this wasn't very moderate at all, and then they follow with supplementary budgets. The issue of our overspending and our overborrowing as a country when we don't have proper accountability, we lose over 80 billion, 80, is it 80 billion or the, uh, trillion, 80 trillion, mm -mm, mm -mm. a billion. Uh, th there was an attorney, sorry, there was an Auditor General's report that talked about the amount of money we are losing annually. I think it's 800 it, the, billion the, or something. The IGG has talked about 10, but uh, the World Bank, I think, talks about, is it two trillion or something two trillion. like that? We're losing this, and, and that's budget. about 30% 30 of, of budget our budget. Yes. Like we lose 30% of our national budget, even as we're borrowing now. We are planning to misuse 30% of it. Then I cannot tell you how much we are spending in commissions of inquiry, because these days I hear people book positions on those commissions because they know there will be corruption. If we are talking about budgeting and we're being honest with ourselves, why would a parliamentary committee approve an additional loan when an MDA has not absorbed at least 60% of that loan? You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You got a loan two years ago, you've not performed, you've not absorbed at the rate you're supposed to absorb, and then the committee is very busy, they even visit the site and, and approve an additional loan. And then we look at uh, and the, on the oversight role, I have not seen a serious scrutiny in budget performance to drive MDAs and, and, and all these organizations, what, what do you call them? The, the cost centers, to account for their lack of, of, of proper use of these resources. How far has Parliament gone to ensure that all their famous reports that have been released by these committees have been implemented, that people have been prosecuted, what has happened here is that big business is in these in, in investigations. There's so much drama, there's so much, they exhaust us with the drama. But at the end of the day, the reports get archived, even the ones that actually show up, not the ones, you know, they dismiss or whatever, but the ones that actually pa get passed and sent to the executive. The parliament has a duty to call on the executive and, and, and the judiciary and ensure that these people are actually prosecuted, that our, th our items that they stole are brought back. I'm yet to see what happened, for instance, in the Bank of Uganda stories, you know? These things make the people lose confidence. Mm -hmm. When they see great reports, scandalous <coughs> stories break, we actually see you be brave enough to identify culprits and call them out, and then, nothing okay. now lastly sorry <coughs> we've talked about um, legislation this parliament passed a, a, an amendment to the cons to the computer misuse act mm -hmm. when they were very aware of how many cases were against the other one 
there was a constitutional there were constitutional cases there was there were outcries i led the uganda law society to go to parliament and inform them and educate them about the need not to pass uh, more, more damaging uh, legislation now this parliament uh faced this ruling from uh Justice Richard Butera, you saw it in the Richard Kar in the Karamaji case, which was very damning. Why are we legislating vague laws that facilitate the miscarriage of justice, especially when there is evidence and hazards that show that you had the information? When you stood up for us on coffee, you based your arguments on what had been given to you. You are given information. People are always willing to give information. We are asking, are you hearing us? You are our only voice. And I think Parliament needs to remember that it is not their voice that is to be heard. It is the voice of the people they represent. Now, in defending the Constitution, and this will be go to my question of how, much, how far are they going to correct the mistakes of the past. We have seen how our Constitution of 1995, which was a document that everybody was proud of, has been twisted and turned until we do not recognize it. How far are we going? Are we going to mend uh, the, the rips that happened? Are we going to go back or are we going to do us? I think for me that's a question. <coughs> uh, lastly, there are issues that we are crying about. If a tax is introduced, on professional certificates. I'm going to be very, very petty and go to, to items that, and, and you know that we are tra struggling to educate, to skill, to professionalize people so they can have a living. In the midst of COVID, you add 100,000 shilling tax. I'm just using it as an example. And in the midst of that, uh, there's drama happening in parliament where there are fights among, uh, Mr. Boy raised the issue, leaders fighting amongst each other and that, cut out, uh, that, that resulting into parliament's reputation being impugned. And then yes, individuals have to face uh, facts. And he said something about parliament has sent a strong message that they will not tolerate belligerence. Belligerence is not a crime. It can be a disciplinary issue. Disputes happen between leaders. I wish that a, 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 the holy, what did you call it? The throne of democracy. Temple. The temple, temple of the temple justice. Of, the, the temple of justice temple is, of yeah. is the court. Temple mm. of democracy. Temple of democracy yeah. should be preserved and protected. I know they have a code of ethics. I know they have disciplinary uh, procedures and things <coughs> like that. I wish we would see less of the fights and more of the work that you're saying we are not seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so personally... I expected that people need a voice. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like the part where she says it's not your voice to be heard, of course yeah. not. but the voice of the people. Yeah. And uh, um, Godba, um, I need you to complete this first phase of uh, everybody trying to, in their own way, respond to that major question from their perspective. Um, a lot has been said, um, but there is a context from which we are coming. Um, your own thoughts. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Charles. And, and I really hear, you know, the, the submissions from colleagues very, uh, quite compelling. Um, let me start it off this way, that uh, I, I think like in many other societies, even here in Uganda, I always say, if you are looking for success stories, you will get them. You are not short of them. So in other words, so there, the yeah, there are many <laughs> success stories in many respects, by the way. Not only parliament, but also the other arms of the state in, um, in professional bodies like the Uganda Law Society and many others in, uh, in, in, you know, across the board. So you can find the stories. Now, the, the tragedy of, uh, of, of human life is that also if you're looking for the problems, you'll find them. At the end of the day, for me, uh, what you are looking for is what are those, uh, let me, I, 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 like call, I like calling them the game changing actions. That because you've taken an action, the lives of the people that you represent has, has changed. 
I think for me that's what, if we're looking at the performance of, uh, of parliament or any of the arms of government or any institution, we're looking at what are those game-changing actions that have changed the lives of people? Because even at the family level, I mean, you can wake up, you say, uh, Charles, you go home, you, 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 buy, you buy groceries, you take home. Uh, please don't go and, say, and report your achievements and say, I bought food. Because that is a given. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I, in fact, even, by the way, even paying fees for children, you, you've, you've not done something fundamental because that's a given. Your family is going to be different by taking certain actions, whether they are of an investment nature, whether they are of uh, a social nature, there are those actions that you will take and they will change the trajectory of your family. And it happens even for the country. So uh, as far as uh, the country is concerned, if you, if you put aside the parliament alone, you're basically saying, as a people, we are in the business of running government. We're running the country. So that's our business. So what is that business that we are doing that is making the changes that make a difference in the lives of Ugandans? So I, I look at the, the delivery of parliament from a number of perspectives. And, and I want to start off from, I think, the point that uh, Fiona made, which is more, uh, you talked about the preamble of the Constitution. Me, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I also start from there and say, first of all, I have to look at parliament as an institution of state. So in other words, there is the executive, there is the judiciary. So the, we have parliament. What is the role of parliament as an institution? What is that institution? So in other words, if we are looking at parliament, we are just saying, what is the quality, the character of that institution? That if Ugandans who sit back in our in our living rooms, in our different places, we say we have a parliament as an institution and this does this kind of work. And I think that at the institutional level, the primary responsibility of parliament, I, I call them parliament, I call it the guardian of the constitution. It's the, well, they are the guardians. Their job is to make sure that this is constitution is protected and implemented and yes. implemented to the later and that any change that you make in that constitution is to the benefit of the beneficiaries of the trust who are the citizens of uganda now as an institution of parliament we have seen it preside over the uh, i i uh, many the, those who talk progressively they, they say amendments i call it mutilation of the constitution. Uh, basically the parliament of Uganda as an institution which is supposed to be the guardian <coughs> has presided over a process of mutilating that constitution to the extent that you can no longer recognize it. I, in fact uh, um, in about the next, uh, the next two or three months w we are publishing the amended constitution of Uganda which we have said no Ugandans need to see what has happened with this constitution. So from that point, uh, you say, uh, the, uh, and, and I should mention also emphasize the fact that the parliament of Uganda amended our constitution before its first anniversary. <laughs> because the first amendment to the 1995 constitution was in July of, 19, of 1996, when a resolution was, pres was passed in parliament to change the size of cabinet. The first anniversary of that constitution was supposed to be in October of 1996. October 8th. October 8th. Oh. Yeah. So basically, uh, at the guardianship level, the institution of parliament has not delivered. Secondly, we, could, we can go to the, the very specific things that, uh, that now the members of parliament themselves that uh, members of parliament, again, these are, these are people that are supposed to be the, the leaders. I mean, they're, they're supposed to be our, 
they, they, they probably should reflect who we are. Because mm -hmm. that's why we call that's why you earn that title called honorable. Uh, that title should uh, should be earned. It should not be like okay, uh, because you have been voted, so you are going to parliament, so we call you honorable. The honorable title is supposed to be earned. And that's why that's why I wanted to, I want to emphasize that this, the small things that we do that or that MPs do that Martin also talked about the talk that is that's important but it's not the issue because when you go to the constituency and an MP will tell you they, I have them most of them in our places all over ah, the MP, some of them you see them standing on graders you see they are making a road uh, others uh, are commissioning this and that those are good things if they happen we 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 like them but then at the end of the day the question is what are those big things that you are doing as mp what are the the, the legislative um uh, achievements that you have made I, in this country we are even unlucky in the sense that your legislation does not translate into budget so even in, in other systems when you enact a law it actually amounts to an appropriation because the government is supposed to allocate the resources mm -hmm. to implement it. In our case, you enact a law and it is kept there and that's it. The story ends there. So you find that the, the impact that you, the law could have created actually is not uh, delivered. But let me just make two other quick comments and uh, then uh, and rest we'll my go for case. A break. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the the parliament has remained more or less like a process institution when it comes to accountability. Only performing a ritual. Yes. I think it's, uh, it's more of a process, it's more of a ritual when it comes to accountability. The fundamental issues where we need accountability from public sector officials, from the executive, they are never they, they can the parliament has lost the mojo to be able to deliver them and i'll give examples one is uh, if you take the example of appointments there are certain key positions that are of government that are supposed to be they are constitutional positions so when you find that the uganda human rights commission has spent a year plus without the commissioners appointed. That's a failure oh, of oversight. Mm -hmm. of when you find that you have a Bank of Uganda, this is a constitutional body, the body that is in charge of monetary policy in this country, and they are, it, you can spend a year or so without a governor, I that agree. the appointing authority basically appoints the governor at his leisure. That's a failure <coughs> of accountability. We've had, we've had in, the, in the past, we've had the judiciary. The chief justice for two years. A, a full arm of the government of Uganda. And the judiciary goes without a chief justice for two years. That's a failure of accountability. Now, you can talk about, you know, we audited the other statutory enterprise and this one and this one. I, I can understand and I can say congratulations, as Fiona would say. <laughs> but when we are talking about oversight, we are not talking about small things. We are talking about how you, f how you make a government run as a government. How you get institutions to operate and they are able to check each other and they are able to complement each other and they are moving a country in the right direction. So I, I think that on that particular function, uh, on the oversight function, I think I have a very big issue with government of Uganda. And I can add one last thing on that point. Eh? Uh, Ma Martin, you've been, uh, you've been, I think, uh, chair of the local government committee. And I know the way you move around uh, 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 across the local government. I, I don't know. I don't know what you, for you guys find out. Huh? But th those of us who do <laughs> research on local governments, we know that there is an absolute dysfunction yeah. of local governments. Actually, now there is a new yeah. report which is showing that 
huge amounts of money yeah. in trillions, over trillions. Yeah. And I think we are going to discuss this matter. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, but you see... It's lost at the local government. No, that is just a, f a small also, finding. That, the, the question of money ge getting lost at the local government level mm -hmm. is a lie. <laughs> because so money is controlled by the center. Are you giving testimonies? Yes. Uh, money is, is a complete lie? It, 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 you, you see... The, the, it's oh, it uh, has some exaggerations. It, it's exaggerated. Yeah, okay. exaggerated. And <laughs> actually, the disease of, of money being stolen basically is, is even ex exported from the sand. Because I can tell you from my research that those guys at the local government level, the political leadership, because normally they blame the political leadership, those guys have no power, they have no authority, they don't control money. Uh, the, one of the challenges that we have as a country is that everybody pretends that they are doing something things. Everybody pretends we are, they are big. A chairman LOC5 will Let's come and... But, but no, no, I, I, I want... They I may not have the power... Let they, me they may not have the power <laughs> to sign, yeah. but I am sure yeah. you and I know yeah. they at least have the opportunity to collude so that the rest yeah, of but I'm, I'm not talking about collusion. About the I'm not talking about collusion. I'm, to, I'm talking about leadership. Okay. For me, who, who interact with these people and either as a researcher or as a, as a, a beneficiary, Okay. A chairman, ROC5, cannot come and start talking big around me because I know that chairman have... has no capacity to do anything that changes my life. Because so he doesn't control money. Okay. He doesn't have power. Chris, I will definitely come power. back to you. So, but let God be first. Uh, so, so let Since... me. Yeah, so I, I really want. Because you see, the, the reason I'm raising this, I don't. Because I don't want to. I, I don't just want to, you, you know, to try and uh, make people happy. Mm. I am only saying that if I, am if I am a member of parliament or if I was the parliament of Uganda as an institution and you go and look at the provisions of the constitution mm. dealing with the decentralization and local government, you know that as parliament of Uganda you have not delivered the decentralization or the local government system that is envisaged under the constitution. And, and uh, Martin, you can go and revisit it. The provisions are very clear, the kind of local government system. So when, even when we talk about the breakdown in service delivery or the failures in service delivery, you realize that we are trying to, we are pretending to use delivery of public service in a local government system or in the centralization, centralization system in a system that does, that does not exist. So that's part of our challenge. Finally, legislation. I think that if I was giving credit to parliament as an institution, I would give it on legislation. When it comes to enacting laws, I think that parliament has really, there, there has been real an effort to enact laws. Uh, they come and, and of course, I also appreciate the constraints that parliament has, which is you can't, you can't introduce a legislation that have that has a charge on the, the consolidated, consolidated fund. fund one thing i have never understood <coughs> is why members of parliament whose whose mm -hmm. one of their primary business is to make laws they go to parliament and amend the constitution to give the president more powers and they never amend the constitution to give themselves the powers to do the job that ugandans send them to do Okay. So all of them will be telling you, you know, I can't present a private member's bill because they say the government has to authorize. Uh, so, uh, so at the end of the day, you ask yourself, what is it that members of parliament are running away from? Because if you can uh, amend the constitution to give power to another institution, why do you fail to amend the constitution to give yourselves power to do the work that Ugandans send you to parliament to do? So I, th so I think I'll hold I my cap here. Um, Chris, we, we, have, we have overrun the time to, to pay bills. And you know, when you sit here, um, we need to also do business. That's so a constraint, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Allow us to pay some bills, Chris. Um, when we come back, I promise I can start with you. Um, but when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it now uh, faster. And uh, since we have now laid the ground, each of us has answered the question of to what extent is this parliament performing? 
Let's take that break now and we will be right back. <music> Keeping an eye on all your balance the old way. I got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Balance is. <laughs> yeah. What is he up to now? Star one one. Keeping an eye on all your balance with the My Airtel app. You have the power in your pocket. The power to see all your balance in one place and in real time. Unlock that power with the My Airtel app. Visit the App Store or Google Play now. <laughs> Happiness comes to us in many places. It's in knowing the mosquito net keeps our children healthy. The wife having the support of her husband. It's in deciding together when to have a baby. And for some, focusing on what's important right now. So what's your happiness? Make the right health decisions to ensure happiness for you and your family. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no farther. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. It with MTN mobile money. Dial star 165 hash. Select my account. Select initiate reversal. You will see your last three transactions. Select the transaction you want to reverse. Enter your mobile money PIN and you'll get an SMS confirmation that the transaction has been blocked from being withdrawn. And that's it. Please note, only transactions that haven't been withdrawn can be reversed. Welcome back from the break. This is Behind the Headlines. And uh, today, Wednesday, the 25th of January, 2023. And uh, we are discussing Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, the current parliament. We are talking about parliament and its business. And the question is, is it delivering? Delivering to whose expectation is now what has been added? And uh, a number of uh, Chris has laid out his point together with Ondra Mapenduzi that yes, we are doing our work well. We are doing our work to our expectations. There are challenges that we can take into account. 
but uh, um, people like uh, um, Godba, Sarah, and, uh, and, uh, and Council Fiona are saying um, it is not the MPs or the staff of parliament, in this case represented by Chris, who should be uh, judging what they do, but the people that uh, are at the grassroots. Um, Council Fiona even referred to them as the Muntua Wansi or the, um, the, the, the people at the grassroots. Um, we are going to uh, continue with the discussion, but for now, allow me, um, there are so many questions, comments that have come in from the viewer, and we need to incorporate them in the discussions that are going on. Um, someone from Bugiri called Geoffrey says, Charles, thanks for the good job. Why does the speaker appoint ad hoc committees when we have standing? But I think that is according to the... Well, um, that's allowable by the um, rules. That's allowable by the... That's allowable by, by, by the rules. By, by yeah. the rules yeah. and, uh, and some of these... The committees, Parliament actually, one of the things that you should know, Parliament works through these committees. They're the ones who do a lot of the job in yeah. the kitchen before they come uh, to the plenary. Um, there is, so that is okay, um, Geoffrey. Um, there is um, someone called Francis Biarohanga from Nansana. He says, <coughs> excuse me, Charles, kindly, could you ask for the, from those legislators, the 10th parliament, why did they fail to control the economy of our country? Ugandans are suffering with a high, um, high up economy and uh, what actions are being taken otherwise people are dying um dying of what uh, francis i wish you had uh, told us um specifically cost of um living. maybe cost of living i don't know um you are leaving us to guess um another person says we need to thank the 11th parliament on the issue of gentleness and well-behaved parliament compare the 10th parliament to the 11th where they caned each other with <laughs> microphone sticks <laughs> that was in their last year we're still watching it but uh, the 11th parliament guys caned themselves um that the speaker then lost control i salute the opposition legislators the way they advise government finally I have liked her. Uh, Sarah, someone has taken two years to finally like your submission. Yeah. Um, this is someone from uh, Kabulengwa. Um, <laughs> and then uh, someone here from Bushenyi called Innocent Tresime um, says, Charles and panelists, I wish to understand why Parliament jumps in to investigate matters such as NSSF um, and homosexuality in schools that are already under investigation by IGG and Ministry of Education. Is that, is it because MPs don't trust these investigative bodies? And why do the MPs just pick issues from social media for investigation? Um, another person here is uh, uh, this one was already covered. Um, there is someone from Nagalama. He says, Charles, thanks for the show. For the past two weeks, I've had time to watch parliamentary sessions every day that it is um, thanks to UBC. In my opinion, the 11th parliament is delivering to a larger extent. However, Emphasis should be put on whether what is passed is actually put in action. I think someone talked about post-legislative um, follow-ups, oh. scrutiny. I think it was Sarah. Um, I have had MPs raise an issue in Parliament. They comment and uh, talk about the issue ten times. The question is, what happens after? Um, thank you very much for that. Um, and then <coughs> um, someone here does not name himself or herself um, and then but says Madame Attorney in red 
um, has actually, <laughs> I, I think that is Fiona. I've just checked to find out <laughs> you who know. is in red. <laughs> and uh, <Anton>. that <laughs> she <laughs> has actually represented the real issues of the layman outside there or even here. The parliamentarians have done a disservice to the common man. Parliament is a liability to yeah. this country. That's what the person thinks. Um, then another person called Musoke Charles from Nansana. He says, thank you very much, namesake Charles. Thank you very much, Musoke. Honorable Ojara sits in the 11th parliament. Does he notice the big fish using parliament for their own interest and personal gains? He's, that is what he, he, <laughs> he, he's answering. Um, let me take two more um, randomly. Um, this is from Odoki Fred in Gulu. The person says, as a common Ugandan, allow me report that we last had something close to a parliament in the ninth or eighth parliament. From the time those he puts honorable in uh, inverted commas in, in, quotes. For, for in quotes from the time they exported their confusion by fighting in the august house in broad daylight it became crystal clear to the world that Uganda parliament is a joke however censuring minister Namuganza I, I appreciate <laughs> <laughs> and then finally um, for now, um, Charles, I am a Chup Rash Rashid in Lira. That house called Parliament that Chris Obore speaks for has lost its reputation a long time ago. <laughs> the over 350 MPs who voted for Honorable Namuganza's censure just wanted to please um, the Madam Speaker. Those who voted no will now operate between their constituencies and Kampala only with no, with nothing like any foreign trip. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need that house even now because it is a deal cutting house mm -hmm. and yet again a liability to Ugandan taxpayer. Now, those are people who are following. Those are your voters, Honorable Mapenduzi. Chris, those are our Ugandans. Um, Chris, you wanted to, um, to throw you to bring in. Yeah, the, you know. God but members, now you can feel free yeah. to God interrupt, Bahari. interject with respect. God, but all parents have made very powerful submissions. <coughs> and when I started, I associated and alluded to those concerns that it is not time to celebrate how great parliament has performed because in public service delivery at least in my policy analysis frame you assess your performance from the feedback of those you serve if you assess yourself alone you may be discordant with the ordinary people who are the principals in this case mm the principal agency theory mm. in, as one of those to be used in this analysis. Social contract. Now, the only problem I get is <coughs> we tend to fuse the issues and therefore we don't provide clarity to the principal on which prism to use to assess the effectiveness of a given institution or a given leader. For instance, we have talked about failure to protect the Constitution. It presupposes that we run a parliamentary system. And all the people here understand the difference in these systems. We run a hybrid between parliamentary and presidential. In other polities, it is either presidential or parliamentary. We owe the public these facts. But if we look like parliament in our context is the alpha and omega of how things should be done, 
we make a mistake. Even in, the st in statecraft, still institutions must operate in a structured manner. That's what democracy presupposes. Mm. Democracy does not mean clutter, which I know I tend to see in our always analysis. <laughs> when Obore is disappointed, he says police are useless. <laughs> get it? Well, I'm right to say it, police is useless, but that is from an emotional point of view. It is better to apply the appreciative inquiry methodology. Christopher, we get to know that there yes, are... If I may interject a bit, you know, when you read that Article 79 of the Constitution, the job of, for Parliament is cut out clearly in the Constitution. And when you say that we are forgetting the, the kind of politics we are, the type of politics which is a hybrid, are you insinuating that you are playing politics outside the Constitution? Sure. And maybe my second question to your previous submission so that you respond at once. You said that uh, the Parliament has agreed to start by respecting the leadership, which is a good thing to do. And it should come automatically. But the way you brought it up, and I was uh, paying <coughs> attention to the detail of your initial submission, it's as if you've created a supreme leader, a kind of ayatora, and, and nobody should touch that lead. I mean, do you have to tell MPs that they have to respect the speaker? <laughs> well, thank you for that feedback. I'm still submitting the Constitution. Even I'm not a lawyer. You are the legal brains. M maybe, maybe Chris. Mm. Chris, maybe let me, for avoidance of doubt, m uh, several mention has been made of uh, the Constitution. Article 79 particularly, um, which is the reference being made, uh, says, um, close one, subject to the provisions of this Constitution, Parliament shall, mandatory meaning, have power to make laws on any matter for the peace, order, development, and good governance of Uganda. Two, except as provided for in this constitution, no person or body other than parliament shall have power to make provisions having the force of law in Uganda except under authority conferred by an act of parliament. The last one, three, Parliament shall protect this constitution and the democratic governance of Uganda. I thought I should bring that. Yeah, so I've, that I've, I've, I've read that Parliament has, is to protect the constitution. I, actually, my submission was in line with that, that we, ought, we owe clarity in our analysis. Yes, Parliament is to protect the constitution. Would I, did the Constitution tell you the mechanisms of protecting it? Does Parliament have enforcement mechanism? That's Who has the... If, if, if Parliament passes laws, does Parliament enforce those laws? So we need to, we need to be a state. God has said Parliament is just an institution of the state. It's not the only institution of the state. At least there we should agree. <coughs> so when you are seeing to what extent can the parliament do this duty? Where has it failed? But if we put a blanket, this parliament is doing nothing, the principle, who's the ordinary person we're talking about, gets lost. Because there is professional power that you guys who have read wield. You influence how people think. But if we choose to influence them from a point of bias, then we are also delaying our democracy. <coughs> but the issue that was very critical for me, that I wanted before to clarify, I do agree. When we talk about the ordinary person, it is easy for us to say the ordinary person. But the understanding I have is that there are layers of reaching the ordinary person. I don't think the Constitution bestowed all authority in the Parliament to ensure the livelihood of the ordinary person is improved. It has a bigger say and it's spelled out in the Constitution. Now, these layers of reaching the ordinary person, to what extent 
are they functional? We need to tolerate that. Because if Honorable Mapenduzi, whom we all know, understands his role as a legislator, we cannot now, that's why they were blamed that they are going to tract us. But she said, the people, the MP cannot speak his own voice. He is the voice of the people. The people have said, come and grade the road. Even when it is not his duty to grade the road. You see how it becomes contradictory. Maybe. Lastly, no, all, you'll get in. <laughs> if we need to improve parliament, mm. and I've said this over and over, I am not shy to say, how can we improve the quality of our leadership? One, for parliament, we can do whatever we want, but until you have a member of parliament who understands that parliament is a center of interests, and there are different interests at play. And therefore, a member of parliament must be equipped with the capability to negotiate, to lobby, to persuade. Those interests should be in the interest in of, of the people. Thank you very you much. You can hold the interest of the people, but you ought to persuade Godba that they, they, what you think is the overriding interest of the people is agreeable to what he thinks is the overriding interest of the people. Now, the danger comes that the people, the voice, have brought Godba and have brought Obore. Did they understand Obore is equipped with these tools to persuade Mapenduzi? There is no other option. Okay. Now, if we think parliament is a place where you just come and command, no, 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 this is this, you will not win in the parliament. You must be equipped to make sure your colleagues understand your point of view. Okay. Your colleagues know you have negotiation skills. But if you cannot negotiate, I've seen in the parliament, mm -hmm. they cannot even deliberate in the house, but they're on the camera to the gallery. That may, in the meantime... So are they delivering? I'm saying not some of them actually play to the gallery. And we can cheer them. And yet what we expect them to do is Sarah is saying there is this issue about the constitution and they are generating the consensus from the people. You as a member of parliament can not therefore think on your own you will make parliament agree with you. You must have the tools let me, let me to find deal me. with the other colleagues. So there is some good news for you. Someone watching you from Nebi says, I don't envy Chris Obore's job Maybe defending right. parliament. But well done. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> the job. person says, he is very smart though. Yeah. He learned okay. very well from right on Rabo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very easy job to straight, defend parliament. Straight from Nebi. <laughs> Your home media. Very easy to defend parliament. Um, Fiona, come in. You <laughs> wanted to cut in. And on health, Fiona, as you come, incremental policy implementation is key. Government has just been supplying CT scans to all regional hospitals. But Chris, on that one, they have been how, how long will it take? When did their budget yes. declaration take place? Some but, but those CT scans <laughs> were approached during COVID. Okay, Chris, Chris <laughs> on, I'm telling you, it Chris is a, on that one, don't it, go. It is a step forward. <laughs> it is a step forward. They were not there. They are there now. Oh that, that's What's okay. The God has said, it is a given to provide the food. <laughs> but God, but it is good manners Chris. to reach home and your children say, Daddy, thank you for can, the provisions. The Bible says, the, then you is be, good be thank you. Be then, thankful. Then, then you start just, you, have. You, you start just that's thanking because Chris. you have no, 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 kids. That's a different Chris, matter. it is also good manners to listen <laughs> to <laughs> ladies. Oh, especially the beautiful ones. <laughs> the, all I said now, ladies. <laughs> all ladies are beautiful. <laughs> Oh, oh, sure, you're yes. right. I don't know, Chris, how you manage those kinds of things. You'd be in trouble. Um, I want to thank uh, Chris. He does a really good job. Mm. But I'd like to qualify something. The people, you are the voice of the people. You're not the hands of the people. You are not sent there to stand on tractors and grid roads. You are sent there to speak to the executive to make sure that the there. needs of the people there are job. met mm. through the decisions of the executive, yeah. through the decisions of the judiciary. 
you empower as parliament, you empower the executive through the approval of budgets where to spend the money. You go to parliament every day. You know that your hospital in your home area does not have even the most basic medicine. But you go there every day and you allow the Abuja protocol to be respected over a number of years. And yet you're also allowing colossal sums of money to be sunk into institutions you know have not even absorbed the funds before, given before. You do the same thing while allowing, and, and we need to talk about these elephants in the room, allowing this, this corruption, this money that is given to these people when, when important decisions need to be made. Yeah. The, 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 the overnight passing of omnibus things without proper scrutiny, without thinking about these, these things. And, and, and it's so funny because these legislations are not things that cannot be foreseeable or planned for. We have an issue of uh, performance evaluation. I have seen, I have read the various balance scorecards for Parliament, and I want to thank, uh, was it Mr. David Puko, mm -hmm. Honourable? Mm -hmm. he, he, really, he really woke us up in the issue of performance. But then, then we started focusing on the wrong things, in my opinion. I want to applaud the current Parliament that I think their attendance levels are really, really high. I think that their, their presence in the regions where they serve is really high, I would say that. But what is the transformative impact of these new parliamentarians in the last two years? Let's leave the old ones. What is the transformative impact they've had? Because as a member of parliament, you're the voice of your people, right? And, and Mr. Boris said something that I wanted to qualify. You are the voice of the people. But your voice, the, the, the constitution gives your voice the power to make the other institutions do their role, their other arms of government. We have had a problem of parliament disrespecting court orders. Even when court says <laughs> this law is, is, yeah. is illegal and the executive keep ignores that court order and continues implementing a certain illegal law, we have had parliament being silent the amendments that are trying to be pushed through being silent. When we look at that same constitution, it talks about the, the right of people to be, to have a fair hearing, to have re effective representation. We have had the legal aid bill in parliament for the last 12 to 15 years. It has never been passed. And every time parliament, it comes to parliament, and I want to thank the members of parliament that have championed it, Everybody is worried about the impact. Let me tell you, the last financial assessment of that bill was, was, imp uh, was saying something about 17 billion shillings. 17 billion. How much is that of our budget? <laughs> Being enough for every Ugandan to be able to access legal aid. We are here in Simple. a place where access to justice has become a fallacy. We saw, and, and I'm sorry to bring up these sorry issues, but these are ghosts that follow me from my time as <laughs> presidency. And I'm not speaking as ULS or anybody, I'm speaking as an individual here. If, for instance, you have uh, a, a fund that is providing money, we have donors that are providing money into the governance and oversight role of government. The government ombudsman was heavily funded by this, this fund. We have the Human Rights Commission. We have all the access to justice mechanisms, including J loss and, and, mm -hmm. and legal aid service providers. And then it's, it's removed. In the year that it is removed, why isn't did, Parliament. Did you say access to justice in Uganda is a fallacy? Oh, yeah, it's a crisis. Uh, you, I, I think you're misquoting mm -hmm. me. Huh? I said mm -hmm. the fallacy of, of, of saying that our, this thing that is provided for in the Constitution was foreign funded, yes? 
Mm. Then they removed the foreign funding. Now my issue is where was Parliament in, in, in insisting that some money be allocated mm. to this very important role? Yeah. And I know that yes, some money now is going to Human Rights Commission and maybe they've increased the budget. Are we some aware areas. that they've got can that. I finish? No, you said you can ask. I'm not Are you, uh, yes. Are you aware yes. that we have had an increase in the number of judges in Uganda? No, that is different. Ha, when ha, I say access to justice, let me let me. I don't speak. want us to because these are interests. The decision of government to stop the DGF. That is not what I'm talking hey. about. Donor money is coming in Chris. foreign funding. If the philosophy of government Chris, has is shifted, is that what he said? I or think I they said no, 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 no. They said here it was foreign funded. It I had was that. yes. That I'm saying, if government has taken a decision, yes, it is evaluating its decisions based on what information it has. Did I say? Did I judge the decision? Mm. I judged the lack of the vacuum, Parliament's failure to fill that vacuum. I did not mm. judge the decision. <coughs> the executive has all the authority to 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 exercise their authority depending on whatever information they have. But if they have. And the parliamentary knows that the Muntua Wansi, who was accessing justice through either legal aid clinics or the Human Rights Commission, or is seeing these budgets being cut, or they have no money anymore, people in legal aid clinics are being sent away all over the country. Chris, I don't know whether you are aware of this. I could bring you numbers. We have. Let me give you an example. We have thirty. We have thirty-five thousand prisoners on remand. Of these 35,000 prisoners, over 10,000 have been on remand longer than their periods that they would have been sentenced to if they were guilty. People who have supposed to have been in prison for two years have been in prison for 10 years. They have yeah. no voice in court. And you've taken away the only chance they had at a free day in court. Even the plea bargains which were sponsored uh, yeah. to the judiciary, by the, even the judiciary, the judiciary budgets for plea bargains went down because they were sponsored by, so I'm saying, Could please, we then listen, please. the pro bono services? You know I have a smaller voice than you, so I'm begging. <laughs> no, 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 no I'm saying, can you I, say can we I, can interject. Can I, can I, no, let's protect Let me Fiona finish. Please. Let no, me, did, Fiona finish. For instance, I, I want to educate Chris on how pro bono works, by the way. If government had not allocated the money, I also had a movement of improving pro bono services. Uh, can I, can I Could, Did we intervene can through pro bono? Listen? Chris, those areas I, I, that he's talking about, I want to say about, something. Mm -hmm. I want to and, protect and Chris is her, talking like an but also, on this <laughs> also, Chris, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, I'm just <laughs> hey, that's Chris, what I'm saying. Chris, mm -hmm. not Sorry. just a lawyer, <laughs> she is the immediate past president of ULS, and yeah. the public would want to listen and benefit from her experience. That is the bias you bring. Even no, 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 no. I speak for Parliament. That I is more, you, and you are, I, I and you are given you the opportunity. You us, spoke, to Chris. <laughs> I brought you to help the public understand how Parliament has performed. Let hmm. on, let council, senior council, by the way, yeah. when you are a president, you become yeah. the senior council. No, Chris doesn't know the Please, difference between gentlemen, council and senior Let me finish. Council. Let me so, time. This is a forum to understand. So yeah. let her um, make her, uh, her yeah. statement, and yes. then you will interject. You will come in later. The Uganda Law Society runs a pro bono project. It's the only pro bono project we have because uh, the legal aid clinics, mm. uh, the legal aid service providers don't do pro bono. Yeah. Pro bono is mandated to be given by only the law council, by the Advocates Act. Yeah. There is supposed to be a pro bono um, regulation that would, ma would, would make it mandatory to provide pro bono or free legal services. It has never been passed. But I am so proud of the lawyers in Uganda that right now we have over 2,500 lawyers that are yeah. providing pro bono services. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you what pro bono service means, Chris. If on average somebody's case has been on, in court for 5 to 15 years, this lawyer has to commit their time, go to court. There's no magistrate. You're saying they've just increased judges. Thank God. But do you know the impact, the delay in increasing those magistrates caused? Yeah. Mm. You go to court. There's no judge. There's no magistrate. They don't have fuel, etc. You, your prisoner hasn't been brought to prison mm -hmm. because there's no bus. The prisons are... The percentage of prison overpopulation right now is 318%. That's, wow. the, that's the capacity in prisons. 
So we have these issues. And when I say access to justice, Chris, that's why I'm talking about. I have applauded you passing the, the Judiciary Administration Bill. I've applauded you giving a budget to the judiciary. But you need, you cannot understate the fact that it took Uganda Law Society going to court to force mm. Parliament to mm. pass that bill. Yeah. And why do you... Why, why yeah. was this? Because Parliament used their power that Godba was talking judge. about mm -hmm. to, to suggest a bill that was going to increase their, their what? What was it called? Their tenure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which That's is entrenchment, right. which yeah. is a serious governance issue. Mm -hmm. And then court overturned it and there was this whole fight mm -hmm. of we yeah. shall not pass this bill. Yeah. So we applaud Parliament that they finally, you know, came to terms and did this. But sometimes some things are too little, too late. But that's the judiciary. We're talking about the executive's role in the constitution to provide access to justice. Okay. And, 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 and I want to finish because yeah. he took a lot of my time. We he does that all the time. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> we you gang of lawyers, keep quiet. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we need to understand <laughs> that and, and Chris, I would love you to speak about Parliament as a person who's represented by them. Because we, and yes, you will represent them, I understand that, and I really, really respect that. But at the end of the day, my mother used to say that the person who loves you will tell you the truth. And we're yeah, speaking from that right. love. Yeah. When you look at the fact that the judiciary, when, when right now, because of the work of the Chief Justice, and I want to applaud him, he has fought, he has lobbied, he has done those things you said, and I can tell you I do not think I want to give the credit of the budgetary progress and the growth to Parliament. The Chief Justice took his time, I saw him over a span of two years at every speech educating everybody, the, ex the, the executive and the Parliament on the importance of growing representation in, in the judiciary all over. And that is what has led to this. You said something very important, uh, Chris. You said that our parliamentarians need to have the capacity to lobby, to debate, to do these things. And I want to tell you there's no education system or curriculum in Uganda that equips these people <coughs> to do that. So however educated they are, we've seen PhD holders fail to lobby. So what we want is not people who are overeducated. We want parliament this money they are spending, 40 million to incentivize passing a bill, we want that money to be put in training parliamentarians to understand Terms, the A member came and apologized on the floor. The immediate past president of the law society should have understood that. If we perpetrate a falsehood, we're not helping parliament. Okay. But, um, um, I'm actually Sarah, referring to this thing. I'm 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 referring to this thing. There are things we need to respond to. Okay. Unfortunately, yes. we are not being given time. You will respond you because I'm asking you. Come in, but you are quiet. Hope, yeah. Hopefully, you will you will recognize. Chris that. has been coming in, but you are not. stopping me also. No, I, I ask you. <laughs> okay. The panel of lawyers. Submit <laughs> quickly. <laughs> so when you tell me Some to wait, I wait. I, I, I want to <laughs> submit <laughs> quickly so that Sarah, uh, honourable Sarah, Mapendus. Sarah, two minutes. Go yes, back and then Mapendus. Well. Yeah. So, so that honourable Mapendus can respond to my question. Honourable Mapendus, I'm here wondering what is the philosophy of this parliament in terms of serving the people. We have uh, uh, submitted a number of areas where we think there are gaps. But even on key functions, uh, and in this I want you to, to comment on the Kosase conflict. If you are really pro-people and your function is oversight and accountability, why would you as parliament block a report on a key institution with a high public interest. Of course, we have public interest in the functioning of all governances, but Ugandans have seen a lot of money being pumped into Uganda Airlines. Some people thought we should have hired planes instead of buying. There, there are so many decisions with huge sums of money in Uganda Airlines. You spend taxpayers' money as MPs. You do scrutiny of Auditor General's report. And when it is complete and submitted, we, we are not going to debate daily monitor rope. Mm. Do you think you are serving the people? Or what is your philosophy as the 11th Parliament? Charles, okay. can I come in now? Okay, goodbye will request that he responds immediately. 
Hopefully. respond to that in in like 30 seconds and then make your point in one and a half minutes. <laughs> is that fair? <laughs> oh yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, I'll try. Well, most Please, of the time was taken by Chris. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is possible. You know, I, 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 I love to listen. And, You're doing very um, well. Yeah, I know. I always try <laughs> to <laughs> guess, not interrupt. Um, Chris and uh, Fiona and Godba, let's listen to Andrava Mapenduzi. Three things before I come to the question raised by Dr. Sarah. One, um, there are a lot of things that uh, senior counselors raise, uh, in addition to what uh, uh, Ladit Godba and, and, and Dr. Sarah. And we take them in good faith, just as I said at the beginning. Because mm -hmm. um, we have to listen. Yeah. And we have to use whatever you say to, 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 to improve what we do. Mm -hmm. So I take it positive, as a member of parliament. And, and we should allow Ugandans to express their views. We learn from that, we improve. Um, but we also need the same Ugandans to support the institution of parliament. Because when we create an impression, we, uh, when, we, when we want to paint it completely useless, you, you kill your own institution. And I think all of us have a duty to make sure this institution functions and you know, uh, gives us what the citizens expect. Um, it is not right to think or to say that the members of parliament do not actually speak uh, or, or bring out the voice of the people. Because what we discuss daily, the things that are raised, the resolutions that are passed, they, 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 they're exactly what every member of parliament brings as a representative of the people and we do that daily. And so when somebody is watching out there and hearing that you see you have to speak for people, and I speak for and on behalf of my people daily. And there are a lot of issues I bring. Some of them are acted upon immediately. Some of them take time. Some of them are, are not yet handled. And it's, it's a process. We have to keep on pushing on. And also, when you say that you see you have failed to do this, you have failed to do this, this is the 11th parliament. We have had 10 parliaments before. They have not finished everything. We are also not going to finish all. Mm -hmm. Neither will you finish public Exactly. Problems. We are not going to finish all. There is so much that we have to do. So if there is a particular law that we haven't worked on, don't think we have, fa we have failed. It is good you are ex you're expressing that. We have to take that okay. and keep on. There are so many bills that have been passed. They are equally important. Okay. All right? We mentioned so, them. Yeah, you mentioned them, but, but you know, if there is one or two or three or four that are not yet, you know, handled, it's, it's, it's not wrong to say they're not yet handled, but it is also wrong to think we have failed to handle them. Okay. Now, the other thing, uh, I haven't answered the other question. I'm following now the... the, 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 you the that is where I say you are not fair, my brother. <laughs> three minutes, I gave you two, you well, have used two. Okay, I'll have, I'll have one, I'll have one minute now, okay. just, just one, okay. thank you. Now that you have given yourself, um, go I'll, for it. I'll try my best, yeah. Uh, good Barry is a very uh, pertinent issue, talking about how local governments have become dysfunctional and all that. You are right. And these are things we have raised. This, this, these are things we have, we have given us recommendation. Mm -hmm. Actually, about a week ago, Parliament debated and, and, and adopted the report of the committee that I chair. And we gave lots of information. And, um, you know, you, and, and you said, you know, there is no mismanagement down and all that. There is a lot that is going on. No, there is a lot. Yeah, there is a lot that is going on. Yeah. And when you look at these records in Parliament, then you know Parliament is trying its best to bring this. Yes, we have to admit that sometimes the executive that is expected to implement some of these recommendations do not do what we expect. And we have raised this. Parliament has taken a decision on that. And actually today, let me tell you this. Today, um, the speaker directed, and this is our position, we cannot keep on approving budget, you know, budget after budget without paying a lot of attention to how you use money before. Yeah before we give you more. Mm -hmm. So these are, these are improvements that are being made every day and hopefully we'll continue doing better. Now the question Please you ask... Um, that. What, what does that mean now? Um, what the speaker said, uh, how is that... He's speaking to the executive. He's speaking to the executive. Because um, you, you see, uh, I'll give you this, like mm -hmm. the committee I chair. There are lots of recommendations. I'll give yes. you just recently, part of the report I gave, mm -hmm. indicated that a lot of the monies went back. One of the things we have asked is, 
if this money went back, we, we, we want to know what steps the executive mm. took. Because uh, for local governments to return over 500 mi uh, billion, mm. okay? May, may I interject, billion. Honorable, yeah. just to clarify my question. I've, I've been concerned in the past, and questions have been raised, as to why government, uh, especially parliament, approves budget to organizations that have failed to absorb money. Because if, for instance, you're getting money, I'm, I'm not talking from a, maybe from a, do, uh, if, if, if you had a donor or you had a department, a government department that's getting um, from, from an organization that gives this legal department money and then you return, it shows that you don't need the, the one you returned. So usually, parliament, in my, in my civilian thought, would ask why they should give them more money that they couldn't absorb. Uh, you see, that, I don't think, well, I, I, I no, want to. I'm just to asking that yes, because yes. What, ha what has happened, and, and if, you, if you study the budgets that we've had, you'll see that there are continuous, there are, there are, organ there are organizations that have continually um, returned money. Okay. And they are continually given, even their, uh, their, their more they increased give budgets. Them more. Just, just quickly UNRWA, on that. Mm. Just a second. When UNRWA became, was removed from the Ministry of Works as, as a, that year, I remember, 400 million had been returned, uh, and yet we had potholes and, and, and everything. But now, Parliament made a decision to put back UNRWA in that same ministry. So, uh, and, and I'm not confusing issues. I'm just saying that these are issues that speak to spending. And these are issues to speak that speak to performance. <coughs> so that's why I said, oh, the speaker said that. So what is going to be done? Okay, let was me, it, let, me use this, let me use this quick cause example. someone to get a smaller budget? Let me use instance? this quick example to answer your question. Yes. I just talk about our findings as a committee where yeah. several local governments return money. Mm. Now, we cannot say those local governments should not get money. Because when we do that... To those volumes... Listen, when we do that, we then fail providing services to the citizens. Now, when you find out, um, say, a local government returned five billion, when you ask why and how, you realize probably they failed to carry out recruitment of staff. And when you dig deeper, there are things related to either incompetence or laxity, or there is a, a service commission that is not functional. So the question is, how do you deal with the, you know, those gaps so that when you are giving money next financial year, some of those challenges are addressed? Okay. So it's, it's but why way. do you um, give but, the money? But, 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 but Sarah gave a very Uganda important question. Actually, Unfortunately, I'm spend. being interrupted. Can so let me answer this. Mm. You can't. You know, Sarah, um, this, this question you have asked is broader than what you think. First, it's about the mandate of parliament, mm -hmm. but also looks at the audit reports, how they should, they should handle. There are also issues to do with, you know, what the constitution requires. The constitution requires that six months from the time when a report is brought by the auditor general to parliament, mm -hmm. it has to be sent to committees. Mm -hmm. Within six months from that time, that report should be debated by parliament. And Is that the constitution? Yes, That's 163. Okay, um, but I'm asking yes, that. Yes, one, 163.5. Okay. Article 163.5. It's very clear on that. So when a report is brought to Parliament, Parliament has committees, as you observed. These reports are sent to the committees. The committees have to internalize the report and report back to Parliament within six months. Now, the challenge we have is that sometimes you have got so much that you have to do. And sometimes there could also be internal challenges within the committees. Let me give you my example. We, we but you have taken too much time, Honorable. Just but, tell but us about Uganda Nine Airlines. Nine minutes and I gave you two. But, but I have to respond. No, okay, so the Uganda Airlines, yes. let me just say this, the Uganda Airlines. And don't you think time is of the essence, since it we is. are approving even more money to this institution, where there are probably, possibly, no, government let, let me bring in good, but let's pass, pass that, uh, that question. Yeah, not protected um, my, my, if, my if own you, you, you in see, the, you, in you the end, you will use it. Um, um, I'll Godba, use it I in the end, in but Godba. again, why don't you allow me to use it now and let I don't me, talk in the end? Let me bring in Godba at this time, <laughs> yeah. and then if there is time, I'll give you later. Godba. Spares yeah. money, you shield the report. No, I, I'll, I'll um, make that, sure. that is what you think. That is that is the kind of... Honorable Mapenduzi, first give Godba. You are, you are becoming in this <laughs> one is uh, one is related to the conduct of business of parliament 
including the committees. Again, when you think in terms of uh, running the business of running government, the, even the institution of parliament has to be able to run as a business. And therefore, the kinds of timelines you're talking about, the committees, the reports, they are all done as a business. When you see those slippages, me, I always go back to the CEO. At the end of the day, in the case of parliament, the speaker is the CEO. So if the things are not being done the way they are done and, and done within the timelines, uh, the leadership of parliament is failing and the, the members of parliament all of a sudden, you take responsibility for all the failures. But I, I wanted just to highlight it at one point that because Fiona kept on alluding to it and say you are speaking for the ordinary person. Yeah? I, I, want, to make, uh, I want to emphasize that in fact at the, bo at, the, at the core we are all ordinary persons when it comes to members of parliament. Mm -hmm. So in other words when the Fiona talks about the ordinary person don't think of the, just the, the woman out there in my village because those have their own challenges. Uh, I mean, the, the road network right now has collapsed wherever you go across this country. And you go to the villages. I, I was in Intungam at the weekend. And you go to those roads that have gullies. And you are thinking of this woman moving on a border border. Some of these are <coughs> women who are pregnant. Some of them are sick. They are moving on a border border. Even if the health centers were working, you are, you are, you are beginning to see the crisis that we, f we face as a country. But there are also ordinary people like you, me and you, <laughs> Mapeduzi. And I said, uh, yesterday when I saw Dr. Wesija being stopped by police from going to attend a meeting in a hotel, for me, that, at that point, Wesija becomes an ordinary Ugandan. And you have a police force. There, there is a reason why these institutions are put in the constitution. So the Inspector General of Police and the Deputy Inspector General of Police and the Uganda Police Force as an institution is in the Constitution. That's the there's a reason. When we say members of Parliament or the Parliament is the guardian of the Constitution, a, a government or a government agency like the police coming out and stopping a senior leader of opposition or a senior politician who is driving his car in a civil manner and is going to address a meeting in a hotel, in a hotel. and there is no outrage in the parliament and you are outraged by censuring a minister who say, oh, this, this one disrespected the speaker. Then I begin to say, okay, disrespecting the speaker is bad, but when it comes to things that cause outrage in terms of representation, those are the things you begin to ask. The, in, right in, now, you need to add in a multi-party dispensation. In a multi-party dispensation, <laughs> right w now. Where that leader's let, let, party is let, the parliament. Yeah. They didn't let, say anything. It doesn't matter. You are talking about the institution. This is not just a the correction of people. For the whole country. This is not She's a correction not a of. Leader. This is not a uh, parliament. Is uh, not. This is not a voter in the parliament. Uh, just can I be protected so I can complete? Eh? <laughs> she doesn't vote. <laughs> Chris, no. I thought you had kept quiet. So, so I, I just want to emphasize the point. I want to emphasize the point that parliament, while they are individual MPs, while they are MPs representing political parties, it is not just a collection of these different groups. So the interest, I, 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 I recognize, Chris. But when it comes to the protection of the constitution, that function, the constitution has no political party. It has no car. Those are the kinds of things where you would expect that all the MPs from whatever their political orientation, they would be coming together because this is about the country. This is about your governance framework. So you, you saw what happened and parliament is quiet. It's unbelievable. We've had cases of people being abducted, kidnapped in broad daylight. Uh, the, the concept of drones this whole thing called drones, eh? now it has been numerized. It's even part of our nomenclature. Simply because the thing has become so notorious that we get out of here, people in a drone will come and pick my penduza and go and keep him somewhere for a couple of weeks and 
nobody can say anything. I was shocked. I think you better it, tell the public yeah. what notorious means in law. It is not the understanding of the normal English. No, no, no. So no. you will be yeah. misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. No. What, what I mean is that uh, and also explain why hmm. what notorious gov why, why law government it. Yeah. would believe that report when the government also seen accident victims paraded as victims of torture. You see, Chris, I don't like being dishonest on public television. Because I, I you think see, we're going to let this issue yeah, yeah, because take you us see, away from that topic. I beg that no, we... No, uh, which issue? That you finish your submission. Yeah, let me finish my submission. The, the point is, I'm making... It is, it is actually sad that I was responding to uh, yeah, Dr. Point. Sarah. I know, and, we're going to... And, uh, wait, wait. Uh, honorable, I can actually... I can you, actually you see, honorable, I, wait, I please, cannot please, wait. Please, please. In, unfortunately... Honorable, I'm going to give you time as we wind up and you will use that to, to let to, me conclude to, to you take the advantage yeah. let me conclude my point best yeah. I say, uh, Matt, uh, Martin, me I'm talking to you as my MP and I'm talking to our parliament I'm talking to Ugandans that the mo the day when you have institutions of state whether they are security agencies whether they are intelligence agencies whether they are they are uh, they are UPDF and they go picking Ugandans ordinary including by those that may have committed crime because there is a there is a procedure on how you deal with people who have committed crime if those people are picked and they are not subjected to that procedure we call it the due process and parliament is quiet and i think the last time even the president came out and addressed the country and said he didn't know who was kidnapping ugandans and parliament is quiet. For me, that's where I'm judging parliament because okay. it can do all the kinds of things <coughs> they are doing. At the end of the day, you have to protect the constitution. You have to protect the life of every Ugandan. Okay. And as long as you don't do that, then your performance scores are going to just go low. Okay, thank you very much. We are left with under Honorable 10 minutes. What I'm going to, to do, I'm going to give each of you, um, I'm going to give each of you two minutes, each of you. Um, and let's use it very fast, and I will be very ruthless with timekeeping on that. Is that the conclusion? Um, um, yes, as we okay. wind up. So, I would like to give my uh, two minutes to Honorable, so that he has a longer submission. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> the public out <laughs> there, rigging. the public out there knows that each of you is uh, wow. um, here individually. <laughs> but route. this is what the, the, the public have been sending um, you know, to cut into our discussion. Someone from Mukono called Ryan mm. Seta Mukono. He says, Charles, thank you for the show. My problem with our parliament is that one, it is easily compromised with money. This is what Ryan is saying. Two, it is not very principled. It tends to please the executive rather than the people they represent. Three, there tends to be a lot of indiscipline despite their procedures. And, uh, and ethics. Four, they do not follow to ensure that past legislations are implemented, thus a waste of taxpayers' money. Otherwise, the title honorable has to be and then um, Job, Job says the discussion is nice, but Charles, <laughs> Parliament clearly has lost direction and it is now busy handling peripheral issues. The following issues affect the people of Uganda and yet they are ignored. Industrial scale corruption, dehumanizing poverty, mass unemployment, high cost of living, exaggerated by commodity, rising commodity prices, lack of textbooks for students, and abductions. The leadership of parliament should revise their agenda and you and also set no they should revise the agenda set by the late speaker jacob olanya this is my tour job let me start with sarah in your two minutes um you can also make a comment on uh, the 26th of uh, of january um nrm day tomorrow but let's let's <laughs> go around two minutes each. Or, or what we are debating is too much burdensome let me concentrate on the topic. You know, the, when you want to tell the character of, of parliament, you just need to observe uh, the, the section for matters of national importance. <laughs> Everybody talks of beans powered on the road. You know, the, 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 the character <laughs> of matters of national importance. 
beans are poured to the no, road. No, no, I just give that as a demonstration of the issues you are raising. That's, that's quite insulting. No, 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 no please, yeah. without due respect. To, to be modest. No, 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 but you will have your time. I already have my two minutes to conclude, and good enough, I'm going before you, so you can respond in your minutes. So when you look at it, it's two, two ways to, to, to define this parliament. Matters of national importance, there is nothing national about what is raised in those matters. The two minutes to speak, you are already giving us two minutes to summarize, but it's problematic. So you get MPs and give them two minutes to speak. Mm. I know that the size of parliament is problematic, but unfortunately, this very parliament, towards their final year, they will create new constituencies, yeah. as if they have no sense of direction. Mm. So. But even with the big numbers, you cannot make any sensible discussion in two minutes. That also defines the character. Mm -hmm. The third character is what Chris Obore alluded to. We have made a decision to respect the leadership, creation of Ayadora, creation of a chief dome. And indeed, like the Kora said, that the five MPs who voted against the essential motion, they will never take a foreign trip, they will never be put on any committee, they are going to be fought. All so that is what... Belong on the no, 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 wait. That all. is what creates, and it came from the audience, that's what creates what citizens are calling the peripheral, petty, and lack of focus in the 11th parliament. Um, thank you very much for keeping time. Honorable Mapenduzi. Um, without uh, getting back to some of the statements that I, I consider kind of insulting that uh, Dr. Sarah has put. Um, Beans is a step of food in this country. Well, I think you, I respect your opinion. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I would ask you to spend a lot more time to understand how Parliament works. Looks like you are stuck with a lot of your own issues in your head and you don't want to know what happens in Parliament and, and you actually, I would say you have no clue <laughs> what happens every day. So you want to say what is in your head and I'll leave it at that. But um, the question you gave that I will very briefly respond to, you know, um, unfortunately you are only talking about Kosase. When we came in two, 2021, we found the previous parliament, the 10th parliament, passed a resolution mm. where a decision was made that there were several reports that were not considered by the committee. So that decision was, was made by parliament that if there are reports that have not been considered within the mandatory six months, parliament will have to take this, those reports as they are based on the recommendations of the Auditor General. And so, when the 11th Parliament started, there were many reports that were not, actually myself, Honorable Segona, and Honorable Joel, we wanted to move a motion to have that decision reconsidered. Mm. So that we look at those reports that the 10th Parliament was not able to look at. So it's, it's actually a precedent. Did set. you move the motion? No, again, because of technicalities. The right Honorable Speaker, the late Jacob, advised that, again, the procedures requires that there is a period within which you can reconsider a decision. Otherwise, we had gone far beyond when the 11th Parliament came. So this is not something Wouldn't new. Wouldn't you say that's undue regard to technicalities? Well, can I just finish? At the expense of justice? Please, can you let me finish? Um, so again, this is not just a decision that the current speaker is taking. It's a decision based on the parliamentary resolution. Now, let me use mine. I can... Our committee looked at 137 districts <coughs> from 139. We were able to produce over 80 reports for, for over 80 entities. But there are other entities we had not yet given. And because there is that provision, constitutional provision, we have to abide by. And so these are decisions, you know, and then people say, you know, there is this report you refuse to. There are technicalities, there are constitutional provision that we have to read. But that also does not mean that when a report is not read, it is not going to be uh, uh, you know, made use of by Parliament. The moment Parliament adopts the report as it is, it has to be taken to the executive to implement the recommendations that are in. 
Now, the other thing I want to say is... Uh, time. Uh, yes, time. Um, it's, it's, it's sad to say Parliament is quiet on many issues. Parliament is not quiet, like uh, Ladit Godbas put. Um, the example you are talking about, let me give you this. Yesterday, the leader of opposition raised this same matter, and it has been raised more than 15 times. These abductions and all that. And the speaker made a ruling. Actually, the speaker directed, directed the executive. The, he actually decided to convene a meeting to have this issue sorted. Because all of us are concerned. Okay. Uganda is being abducted. But it is, it is wrong to say we are not talking about it. Okay. Just because you don't attend parliament, so you don't know what is so, discussed. So parliament has taken action. The parliament has, has taken action. Parliament has made directives. There are resolution. Okay. If there are people who should implement this and they are failing to do, you cannot say parliament is failing its role. Okay. Good. Bye. Right. So these are things that we need to. Actually, um, that, that's what I. W that's where I will start. Uh, 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 Charles, as I wind up, that if there are people supposed to take action, and parliament declares itself to be as helpless as me mm -hmm. and an ordinary Ugandan, then that's where the real problem is. Because the structure of our government w ha was, uh, when you look at, the const at our constitution, the structure of our government is that each of these institutions of state are supposed to be accountable to each other. Okay. Right now, uh, you can say the way, I mean, the, there is a way the, the executive has captured, maybe I should not even say the executive because sometimes when you say executive, you make the corporate entity and blame everybody. But I think that President Museven has been able to craft his power structure and capture every institution of state and use it to his Is advantage. it him who has captured, or yeah. it is this, the other institutions that are failing so to do their part? No, no, no. You're no. absorbing all the other arms so of So you're absorbing the rest? Mm. Because it can be, they are the ones let's, who are weak. Let me explain in the... Because in you earlier, minutes, remember you earlier said yeah. that, uh, you earlier said parliament. that parliamentarians yeah. have been amending yes. to remove their own power. Yes, okay. So how can you then change and say, that yeah. it is someone it's, a, it's, it's, it's both ways <laughs> someone is capturing you okay. and then you have no capacity to resist and so you then we, and we you can't surrender. hold parliament accountable and you surrender so the point i'm making <laughs> is that when when um, uh, martin says oh you know they are talking their decisions uh they when when ugandans are being abducted this is a, a situation of emergency the, you know the way the NRM people, when there is something they want to do, they run very quickly and convene this meeting, go to state house. Normally, when Ugandans are, are, are being abducted, that's how you would expect the parliament to to to, to conduct its its business because there is a crisis. So it's an, even after two years of these abductions, and then the, the, yesterday the speaker comes and you know makes all these directives and say we are going to meet and say it's okay, it's like, they are not taking us serious as Ugandans. And uh, so let me end by saying that at the today, where we are now as a country, the citizens of Uganda must understand, we must understand that, that we are more on our own. <laughs> yeah, We are more on our own, and we have to be able to work together collectively to, re to help these institutions. Even, even the MPs, they need help. Even the president needs help. All these institutions, they need to be helped to, to regain their consciousness and serve the people. I wish. Okay, I would. Okay, Fiona. So <coughs> as we think about one. liberation mm. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, thank you very much. Uh, you never allowed me to talk about that. I'll no. also, I, I'll also I gave you two minutes, you two used minutes five and you didn't say it. Well, Fiona, I am not, I'm not yeah. going to say anything. Fiona, I, mean, Fiona, please. I like how you're promoting me. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> speaking uh, of liberation, Uganda is in bondage. We have a DNA of corruption. When I say DNA of corruption, even in schools, when our children stand for prefect, or they are giving yeah. logistics, they know about cheating. We have parents who are paying teachers right now to steal exams for their children. Their schools 
that have made money because they even include someone told me they even include the fee for what we call sassy which, is, that? which is bullet the answer the, mm. the answers eh? so it's sassy. the school fees that mm. last that's last term of either mm. ple or mm. s6 or mm. it has that fee wow oh street Leakage. exams eh? yes I, I'm sorry, tell maybe me, Parliament needs school. to investigate tell me this. School and, uh, <coughs> I was, I was actually, I was a little saddened by, not saddened, not because it was a bad thing. I applaud, you know, the, 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 the deputy speaker talking about the homosexuality in schools. But I wish when the Rakojo report on sexual harassment in schools came out, there was as much uproar. Outrage, yeah. I am very saddened that the Parliament of Uganda would tie its hands. Article, the same constitution that gives them the power to make those regulations and the same article, sorry, the same constitution that has all these things, has a very important clause that says, Article 126.2e, says, do not do substantive justice without undue regard to technicalities. And this talks about courts. I do not want... Uh, us to, what's the word? I don't want us to debate the issue of whether Parliament could revisit these reports or not. But I know that the things that were reported in those reports are public knowledge. We know what happened with Bank of Uganda. We know what happened with uh, the land uh, report, uh, the no, Mamgemeri no. Commission. We know these things have right now actually honorable and 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 NDP3 talks about investment. There's trillions of investment that is not going to go ahead because of the problems with the land corruption cases yeah. that we have. Without addressing that, NDP3 is useless completely. Okay. You're, you're, calling, uh, you're calling investors to come to a place where you cannot even access certain land for years and years and years and because of, of corruption issues. Yeah. Now, uh, so I would love for Parliament, if you need help from from the judiciary, if you need the law society or lawyers like mm. me to take a case to court to, to cause you through a court order to revisit these things, we are here. But let's act like <coughs> Ugandans. Let's is not hide our head in the really, sand. No, is I'm, that all you could say of I'm the coming. NRM liberation day? I talked about liberation. I'm coming. I'm there. I'm almost there. You <laughs> <took> my liberation <laughs> from what? I'm, I'm using ordinary man's language. You know? hey, what <laughs> Liberate us from yeah. this DNA of corruption and start with the man in the mirror. Parliament, you are paid, you're the highest paid civil servants in the country. You have a pension, your salaries are not taxed. You you're lying. You are lying. Okay. Um, you will tell me I'm not lying. Lie, you one of the things, one, uh, senior council, wait. it's um, but, but that can is I true. finish? It's, it's not true. Uh, but that is true. Can How I much finish? is your salary? Tell us. Uh, Six point that one that is the same uh, question so you have been. Some of them will say I am not, the nine I'm million. Sorry, I'm, I'm they have ever told us they are nine Charles, million. Now you are saying six point two. I take home. Charles. <laughs> Charles, yeah, I have repeatedly. Someone for starters, even MPs have never agreed among themselves Charles. on how much that pay. Charles, Charles. Listen, right listen here. Charles. I have repeatedly given you that Honorable. answer. Honorable. And Honorable. it looks like you are not willing Honorable. to, to the listen. The topic here is not your salary. <coughs> the topic is stop taking bribes yes, to the be... The topic is a lie that Parliament is not To be, to be compromised in any way. And we are saying stop. But, Why? But again, no, again, listen. And I'm not talking listen, about listen, the recent... Listen here. But also listen, because you have repeatedly talked about Parliament. Fiona was supposed to be concluded. I want you to produce evidence. Honorable okay? Where a member of parliament is no, 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 no. Because you see, this stupid statement are not fair. No, you are taken all my time. No, 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 no. It is not just in the time. He has taken my two minutes. So what I'm saying is... We are asking Parliament to deal with corruption <laughs> when their, their their hands have not been very clean. And I do not I'm not going to be put to, to, to task on these issues. When we have cases in parliamentary issues, we all know what happened. We all know what has been been happening in that parliament. So let's How not do your news. We took judicial notice. <laughs> please liberate us. Please. I'm, so I'm speaking Charles, to Parliament. Fiona, please liberate us you don't from like your debilitating to taxation that sometimes is unplanned. Deliver us from debt. We are and I'm saying that tomorrow, as we talk is, about liberation, please, 
We need Parliament to know. Parliament is going to deliver. Please, as please. we appreciate the you NRM liberation bias. day of 1986, mm. we want to say NRM, Parliament, Judiciary, save us from corruption, save us from yeah. debt, save us from irresponsible spending, save us from anything in Parliament that, den that moves away from our so-called NDP3, which mm -hmm. has also been... Okay, uh, thank you very much, Fiona. Chris, planning. there is a dictum in law. He who comes to equity must come with, with clean, clean hands. hands. That is what she's saying. Chris, and, and, you wind up. And we are Two saying, minutes, wind up. Uh, yes, um, we are saying, don't come to court with the falsehoods. <laughs> Table of facts. <laughs> <laughs> if we are lawyers who speak like any other <coughs> person, it puts your legal education into question. Because <laughs> evidence is a matter of court. Yeah, but then for you, you pick anything and say, but, but this, is not, this is so not court. Who gave evidence here? Who gave evidence here? You rebut. But, <laughs> but we also you. shouldn't use this platform Chris, to, to spread lies. Chris, yeah. this is not court. Is no, they no. have alleged you rebut. You are no, 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 rebutting now, but they are interfering with you. I have no. You see, you have got back and the other Baba Penduzi, you are out of order for having another meeting. We apologize. Chris is the one on the floor. Land people should be at the forefront on giving people factual information. But if we begin transporting rumors from point A to point B, you join us the and land, and we shall not tell a difference. It becomes part of You're spending your two problem. last minutes I, focusing Fiona, on Fiona, Fiona, Fiona was complaining. Yes, she's the Fiona. one. You see? No, so, Charles, uh, yeah. I, want to, I want to <laughs> applaud <laughs> Parliament. Mm. From what I've listened here, I want to state again, Parliament is a center of politics, it is a center where interests are processed. We cannot go against it. And what I see the proponents of this parliament being doing nothing, they are proposing a certain form of democracy in their minds that we call deadlock democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Deadlock democracy serves no that's, interest of the ordinary person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's deadlock democracy. Go and read about it. Ah, well, yeah. Everything gone by me as students of public policy. <laughs> we know where we're coming from. <laughs> A deadlock democracy serves no interest of the ordinary person. That's why Hodera Public says even when we see gaps in the local government, we still believe there must be money annually for whatever there is to trickle to the ordinary person. Okay. The assumption here must be, let us stop. Parliament must have this. And I'm saying, nobody has told me here that this is the enforcement mechanism for Parliament. And I said, a democracy is structured. It's not a clutter. The enforcement where mechanism you come, is the executive. Where, please so keep you quiet. You them. began transporting lies ah, here that you are not taxed. Chris, Parliament is do taxed. you know you did not let me so, speak? So, so, Charles, <laughs> you do not expect a democracy. Maybe say exaggeration, <laughs> but he has some facts in that. Okay, exaggeration. <laughs> the, but, but, but Charles, you're also interrupting him. Not for harmony. Yes. Council. You, you, you have he was about, talking about belligerence and rudeness. Council 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 but, but can the two of you allow him finish, please? He's the one who is now raising more controversies. <laughs> one your, minute. You're taking your bias. One, one minute. minute. <laughs> so, I still insist. Parliament is not to the optimum, yes. but Parliament every other month, every other year is, is working to improve That's good. their work methods, to improve how they can deliver. That's good. And at institutional expense, building, what is good? We, we must, we must the improvement. Yes, Where? we must take the improvement. The fact that he said can you reduce their really numbers? Right. Because Will they work harder? First, first, first you see. When you ask Chris, for it, proceed, proceed. People are hearing. I you. am very good at serving it back. So we are Serve saying it. the institution of parliament is not a perfect institution. Good. Agreed. Yes. The members of parliament are not perfect Ugandans. They are human Agreed. beings. Yes. But there are mechanisms how we can collectively keep progressing True. and overcoming challenges. That one it I does agree. not amount to being useless. Good. Now. I have already said here, my boss is here, finally, <laughs> my boss is here, I've told him, if we want the results we want from our members of parliament, we must retool them, we must equip them on three skills 
that make their work in the house meaningful. A member of parliament with tools, with tools. has to be able to negotiate, mm -hmm. has to be able to lobby, mm -hmm. more That's so right. has to be able to persuade. Isn't it the secretary's role to retool them? We okay. have to persuade. Mm. These are techniques in parliamentary engagement. Thank you very because much, Chris. you are exchanging interests. So if, if we can't do that, then we're not improving parliament. The I other last point you. is, it let no one misunderstand the overwhelming support members showed to their speaker <laughs> over the, the an Ayatollah. attack on her. Because you don't Did like her, to their speaker <laughs> or you Imagine. started well. Listen, you listen, listen, listen. They say, wow. hey, listen. When did this become a topic on whether we like or we don't like? Listen, right. listen, the listen. listen. They, the said, they said here, the they said here, an ayatollah. Mm. To attack on a person. Mm. Ah. Yes. To attack on a person. Okay. I, Which one? I said, yes. And I, I the members of parliament, pretty, by the way, across <laughs> the board, you should, it should make you worry if you're analysts. Please stop bundling us. Members of parliament go. who are FDC, who are NOOP, who are independents, agreed that you will not denigrate, denigrate our house, you will not abuse our leaders, and we don't sanction you. It doesn't make the leader an ayatollah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Chris Obore. Thank you very much, Senior Council Fiona. Thank you, Council Godba. Thank you very much, Omera, Apoye. Honorable Mapenduzi, and thank you, Council Apoye, Sarah. <laughs> thank you very much to the viewer out there for listening to this team and for participating, especially those of you, I must thank those of you who send in and share with us your thoughts, your messages, and through the questions and comments that you make. Um, it, it, they, they rightly so, um, you know, they add value to the discussion and to the participation that we need on the show. From the team here, we want to thank you very much. From UBC, we want to thank you and uh, wish you the best of the celebration of the NRM um, Liberation Day, the 26th of January, in Kakumiro. Is it called Kakumiro? In Kakumiro, in the Prime Minister's land. The Prime Minister's land. And uh, congratulations to her for peeling Matoke with, uh, with the local people there as part of the celebration. Thank you very much, Uganda. God bless you. Bye-bye. And be good. Inspiring Uganda.